Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Today's episode will be a follow-up to our last month's exploration into the obstacles to mainstream adoption that blockchain and DLT is currently facing. The first episode was focused on general, end-user oriented reasons why the technology still hasn't been a smash hit. Our today's episode is devoted to something that is often considered the kryptonite of blockchain, scalability. How serious is the scalability issue anyway? Let me give you a few figures. Bitcoin is currently being traded at the volume of around 300,000 transactions per day, but the network can handle the maximum of only seven simple transactions per second, and not more than three complex transactions per second. This means that the network is currently operating at close to its maximum capacity. Ethereum is not much better off, with the current limit of 15 transactions per second. Even though the hypothetical capacity for transactions of a single Ethereum node is over 1,000 transactions, the existing gas limit lowers the figure significantly. EOS, on the other hand, a blockchain focused on speed and scalability managed to grow up to four terabytes in under eight months. Not particularly lean when you compare it to the other blockchains. Why is that an issue? Just looking at regular cryptocurrencies and their highly volatile market prices, a delay in transaction processing can lead to losses, especially for day traders and volume traders. And of course, when it comes to dApps and other blockchain-based applications, processing speeds limit could serve as a major obstacle to adoption, especially for mobile apps. Long waiting times would generally cause interrupted sessions and app deletions. Imagine trying to access YouTube via a 90s-style dial-up modem and you immediately understand why this becomes especially crucial when thinking about any mainstream implementation. In our previous episode on this topic, we analyzed why users have not accepted blockchain technology far and wide, but looking at it from the point of view of scalability, maybe it's a good thing. Blockchain apps might simply not be ready for prime time. Another scalability issue is, of course, energy. It is no secret that the proof-of-work consensus mechanism used by Bitcoin and Ethereum uses up a lot of energy, and for DLT to go mainstream, this would need to be addressed as well. What is important to note that these issues pertain primarily to public blockchains. In a private blockchain, even one based on a Bitcoin protocol, high speeds are achievable because you can ensure that every node on the network is a high-quality computer with a high-bandwidth connection. The fundamental challenge when it comes to scaling up blockchain projects is rooted in something called the scalability trilemma. This concept is connected to what we call a project management triangle. It is an idea that every product or a service can be characterized by only two of the below three characteristics. Number one, fast, two, cheap, and three, good. A product can be delivered quickly and can be cheap, but then it won't be good. It can be good and fast, but it will not be cheap. You're getting the idea. The scalability trilemma uses the same logic. Your blockchain needs to be decentralized, secure, and fast, and it only can be two of those at the same time. The term was originally coined by Vitalik Buterin himself, so it's obvious that the Ethereum team is conscious of the problem and is already working on it. To illustrate it, let's take a Bitcoin blockchain. The network is relatively secure and fully decentralized, which means that it can't be fast. EOS and Ripple, on the other hand, are faster and are said to be relatively secure, but that means that they can't be fully decentralized. I'm sure you know what we mean by those terms, but in case you need a refresher, here's the breakdown. Decentralized, of course, means that the ledger is distributed across multiple nodes on the network. It's a technology that is not housed on a single server, but distributed to all the network participants. More importantly, decentralization also refers to a level of control. There should be no center point of control. Rather than relying on a central authority to validate transactions, the consensus protocol should validate data in an incorruptible and immutable way. Such decentralization should also remove the need for trust in the network as no one should be able to manipulate it. By secure, we of course mean safe from hacks and exploits. It doesn't pertain to bugs or errors in code, but rather the ability of the networks to withstand 51% attacks and Sybil attacks where one actor assumes many identities. When it comes to speed, it means that blockchain can quickly process any transaction regardless of the volume and the number of network participants. Such an independence between speed and number of participants is what we most commonly refer to when we're thinking of scalability. Of course, most people have already accepted the reality that a blockchain solution will never be faster than a traditional database running on a single server, so the benefits of decentralization and security really need to outweigh the speed limits. The trilemma is really well demonstrated using the example of Bitcoin and its consensus protocol, proof of work. In this protocol, nodes have to spend a significant amount of computing power, electricity, 
before they can add the block to the chain. This is probably the best way to ensure that the network is secure, but also, by definition, it will never be able to compete in speed. The design of Bitcoin prioritizes security and decentralization over speed, so the lack of scalability when it comes to Bitcoin is really a feature, not a bug, but one that still hinders the network's development. When Bitcoin Cash forked from the main Bitcoin blockchain in 2017, the fundamental reason was dealing with its scalability issue. The approach that Bitcoin Cash took was increasing the size of a single block, first from Bitcoin's 1 megabyte to 8 megabytes, and then further to 32 megabytes. A higher block size means more transactions that can be processed per second, but also makes full nodes more expensive to operate, leading to centralized entities having more leverage on the network. As of early 2019, Ethereum still uses proof-of-work protocol, but it has been rumored to be fully switching to proof-of-stake protocol sometime in 2019. This algorithm on Ethereum blockchain is called Casper, and will replace miners with validators who stake their funds to bet on correct blocks being appended to the blockchain. Proof of stake has its own range of issues, but its promise is to limit the energy consumption and speed challenges of the current blockchain. There are already companies designing their products around Casper and other layers to Ethereum scaling solutions. One such example is Lucidity, a blockchain-based system that tracks advertising impressions on the blockchain to weed out suspect sites and bot fraud. This allows advertisers to more carefully direct their ad spending to publishers validated on the blockchain. Their implementation of a plasma cash scaling solution means that they can process the massive amount of transactions required to track advertising impressions throughout the entire ad delivery chain. So, outside of a higher block size and a proof-of-stake approach, what are the current known solutions to blockchain scalability issues? Let's start by looking into EOS, a controversial project that clearly chooses security and speed over decentralization. Its consensus mechanism is called the Delegated Proof of Stake, or DPOS, and was created by Don Larimer, the founder of Steemit. With DPOS, any EOS holder is encouraged to vote for 21 block producers. The producers are then incentivized to enforce the rules, prevent double spending, and drive the network forward. With the transactions being validated by only 21 nodes, the speed and energy efficiency of the network can be increased significantly. In addition, network resources such as bandwidth, RAM, and CPU can also be purchased or rented with EOS tokens, which ensures that only purposeful computation is happening on the blockchain. The EOS team claims that they can process up to 1 million transactions per second. The technology is not there yet, and the claimed performance is around 1200 TPS transactions per second. But According to some reports, the actual limit is currently at 250 transactions. Whatever the EOS team is doing, they seem to be doing it right, as EOS can currently boast a much higher number of dApp users than Ethereum. Ripple has also been advertised as a blockchain that claims to have found the solution to the scaling issue. With Ripple, however, we have to understand that it is more of a back-end solution than a customer-facing app. Ripple deals with scalability by transferring IOU, yes, IOU debt, obligations through gateways and always trying to find the most efficient way to communicate between the two of them. Then, to make sure there's no double spending, the distributed ledger records and validates all transactions. The current network claims to be able to process 1,500 transactions per second and promises to have the capacity for 50,000 transactions, which would be close to the golden standard of transaction capacity the Visa network. The trade-off here is the network's significant centralization. It is caused by the validators being pre-selected by the Ripple Foundation. Since all the participants have to trust these nodes in order to perform operations on the blockchain, this move seems to be giving too much leverage to the foundation itself. For that reason, some people refer to Ripple as a bino, blockchain in name only. Another scalability solution was proposed by Stellar, which, similarly to other projects, is a distributed network of nodes with every node holding all transactions and records. Stellar has its own consensus mechanism, simply called Stellar Consensus Protocol. How this works is that each node gathers a cluster of trusted validator nodes called a quorum slice. The clusters then build a network of trust and limit the energy requirements of the blockchain. This allegedly allows for 1,000 transactions to be processed each second. The solution to the centralization issue here is that Stellar lets almost anyone run a node. You do not need to be selected by some unaccountable central entity. One problem with Stellar, however, is the lack of incentives as node operators do not get monetary rewards. This keeps the transaction fees very low, 
but can also limit the motivation to participate. Other potential solutions include sidechains or off-chain resources to take the burden away from the main blockchain. Sidechain is exactly what it sounds like, a secondary blockchain layer designed to facilitate lower cost and higher speed transactions between two or more parties. Off-chain solutions mean moving the entire computation process into the non-blockchain environment without increasing the risk. When it comes to off-chain solutions, we identify two options off-chain state channels, and off-chain computations. State channels are mechanisms where blockchain interactions get conducted outside of the network. In order to ensure security and compliance with the rules, a part of the blockchain is locked by a smart contract that requires participants to reach 100% consensus to update this part of the blockchain. When they fully agree, the state is then transferred back to the blockchain and the state channel is closed. In this sense, the blockchain is used purely as a settlement layer to process the final transaction, which helps to lift the the burden from the ecosystem. By using a state channel, we can increase transaction capacity, lower fees, and process information more quickly. An example of such an implementation is the Lightning Network. Off-chain computations work in a very similar way. A trusted, verifiable system executes computations outside of a blockchain. This pertains primarily to operations that would be extremely expensive on the blockchain. Plasma is an example of a similar solution with a series of smart contracts running on top of the existing blockchain, which then ensures reliability and validity of those Plasma chains. The Plasma blockchain does not disclose block contents on the root chain. Instead, only the block header hashes are given to the root, which is enough to determine block validity. If there is proof of fraud present on the main chain, the block is rolled back and the block creator is penalized. Multiple other parties are also developing different solutions to tackle the scalability issue and break the scalability trilemma. Ethereum sharding, for example, breaks the network into smaller blockchains to distribute computational load. Experiments are also performed on decentralized storage solutions, where only information needed locally is stored on the blockchain, and all the other data is stored off-chain. To sum up, scalability is a huge issue that remains probably the biggest obstacle to widespread adoption. One thing is certain, the solution that becomes the most successful needs to resolve the scalability trilemma. As we know, blockchain operations will probably always be slower than traditional centralized computing, and that's why these three benefits of DLT, speed, security, and decentralization, all need to be present in order to convince consumers to start using the technology on a wider scale. In addition, our current environmental challenges and general drive towards energy efficiency requires blockchain technology to become much leaner in terms of consumption. Energy efficiency and increase in speed should therefore go hand in hand without compromising security or introducing a level of centralization that would negate the benefits of DLT. Before you go, Please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. I'll see you on the next one.